it's amazing that two of the um, most dynamic or uh, amazing events of the Bible, uh, Elijah calling down fire from heaven, Peter walking on the water with Jesus, were followed by defeat. Elijah runs from Jezebel's threat. Peter sinks into the water when he sees the wind and the waves. The wind uh, witnessed by the blowing of the water <laughs> off the top of the waves and things like that. You've seen that and with the rain coming down, you can see the wind in a storm. It's amazing that the most miraculous can oftentimes be followed with times of distress in a Christian's heart going from a mountaintop experience to a valley. That our eyes get turned away from the Lord and the joy that we have from having that mountaintop experience is swallowed up by a, a trial that Satan may bring our way and uh, try to derail us from being as power empowered as the Lord would have it us to be. And uh, Elijah did run from Jezebel in today's passage. And finally, after running into the wilderness for 40 days... He uh, talks to the Lord, and the Lord says, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he didn't have a good excuse, but uh, the Lord told him what to do. He said, Go anoint this person to be king, go anoint that person to be king. And one in Samaria, one or one in Israel, and one in another country. And uh, then he said, uh, anoint Elisha to be a prophet to proceed after you. So he's going to be your uh, apprentice for a while. And he was for a good while. And uh, so it doesn't record that Elijah did the first two things. So he doesn't record that he anointed the, the two men to be kings, but he did immediately go get Elisha and he threw off his mantle and threw it on him like uh, a king would take off his crown and hand it to another and making him not the king but <laughs> Elisha Elijah was still the prophet and Elijah was still the apprentice but uh, Elijah was acting like he was uh, throwing off and I mean, I've uh, I've done something like that in uh, appointing another person to teach a class that I was teaching, and yet uh, I knew that this person needed to be prodded to be all that he was meant to be by the Lord, and that by my teaching of the class. It wasn't uh, increasing uh, my strengths as much as it would increase the strengths of someone who should be but isn't and uh, to encourage them. I love that word encourage, to make courageous. And uh, we all need to be made courageous because we're in uh, trying, desperate times and uh, desperate times require desperate measures and uh, believe me I want to take uh, desperate measures to stir myself up even uh, as I've come back from Ohio and I've been wiped out today and yet I don't want to get depressed about being wiped out but I sure feel <laughs> feel a little beat up <laughs> and it's
perfectly normal when you're physically exhausted to uh, feel beat up and uh, maybe allow your uh, thought process to try to get steered one way or another and I just won't have it. I won't have it. I'm not going to let myself uh, be derailed by a physical effect of exhaustion. <laughs> I burn the candle on both ends a little too much. <laughs> and uh, push, push, push. But I want to be uh, all that I should be for the Lord. And still try to please my family and uh, get them where they need to be as far as going to Georgia, going to Ohio uh, this next weekend, doing the work of the Lord, and going to New York City to visit a church in New Jersey across the river from New York City. And so... I look forward to doing that and look forward to all that the Lord would have for me there and visit the site of the uh, 911 tragedy, Ground Zero, uh, the Freedom Tower, hopefully the Statue of Liberty. Try to embrace uh, the, uh, I would say, the legacy that uh, has been brought upon us. And, uh, and allow it to be a ministering point to others. And so that's what I want. I want. The Lord's message to go forth. That's really what I want. The Lord's message will go forth. And so uh, that uh, transitioning from the Kings to the Corinthians, and Paul saying that they, the Corinthians, are his commendation. He said, Not that I need a commendation. Uh, Paul obviously has his cred credentials written in heaven based on the ministry that God had given him to do. God gave him uh, a ministry to go out, and he went out. He went out uh, to Asia. He went out to Athens. He's gone out all throughout uh, those areas two times, uh, planted several churches and saved a lot of people and the message had gone out to really the whole known world by the end of Paul's life and the Bible said that uh, uh, those who were his opponents said that uh, his message had gone out to the whole world that he was turning the world upside down. This is the man who's turning the world upside down. And so that's what his opponents said about him. But Paul said that the testimony of their belief was his commendation, that those people that we touch with the Lord's love, those people are our prize and honor, and that they are the testimony of ours for the kingdom of God. And so we should look at that. Whose lives are we touching? Whose lives are we lifting up? Are we being a blessing? It's not too late to be a blessing. If we're not, I mean... We can get self-absorbed. It's easy to get self-absorbed. Our focus isn't right. We're concerned about things. We worry about things. Uh, 
as uh, Paul said about the one type of soil that had the thorns grow up within it, that it was the worries and the cares of the world, uh, made that soil unfruitful. But those that put their trust in the Lord will have crops of 30, 60, and 100 times uh, what has been placed into them. The seed that was planted produces 100-fold harvest. That's a miraculous harvest. You figure one seed, one plant, right? You know? But 100 Fold harvest. That's a lot of fruit. And that's what the Lord would love to see out of all of us, that we would let him work in our lives in such a way that will be a blessing to many lives. And so Paul says that we should seek that. And... Uh, This, this passage ends about Moses. Well, in the middle of it, it was talking about Moses' glory. And Moses would come off this mountain, and he was receiving the law. And the law only showed that we were lawbreakers, right? But when he came off this mountain, he came off with such a glow, the glory that the Lord had placed upon him that is. The glory of the Lord upon Moses was so bright that it was blinding to the people who saw him. He had to put a veil over his face as the glory would be fading away. He, uh, and so Moses didn't want them to see his face while the glory was fading away. And, uh, and then he would take the, the veil off. But we with unveiled faces reflect a much greater glory than the glory that Moses had because we reflect a glory that is imperishable. It's not a law of condemnation, but his freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, it says, there is freedom. We have the freedom that's found in Christ to just live a relationship of love with God and love with our neighbors. So we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our strength, love our neighbors ourselves. We walk with the Lord in this love that he wants us to walk in. And we'll have that relationship with him and we'll reflect his glory as we minister to other people. Have you ever heard anybody say, I want what you have. I want what you have. Draw near to the Lord so that you'll hear that. I want what you have. And <laughs> it's pretty incredible when you hear those words. Because then you know that uh, you're in the sweet spot with the Lord. That you've drawn in. He says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. And that's his word. I, I, I said that yesterday in my little post. I said that is one of the most awesome promises that God gave to us. That if we just draw near to him, that he will draw near to us he wants to see that there's a desire for a relationship with him and that we don't come to him just out of the fear but out of love the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom just the beginning he wants that relationship to be turned into a relationship of love as he blesses our life. He has blessed my life in a crazy way. <laughs> and uh, I heard a few of those testimonies, even when I was in Ohio, uh, two different people told me of 
things that I had said or ministry that was worked out in their life while I was ministering to them, but it was the Lord who did it. There's nothing that I could glory in. But the Lord did it, and I was just a piece of that. I was there. I was the, the hand that took them to the place where the Lord blessed them with a word. <laughs> That's, it's awesome. I want to be back to that spot that I've been at before where the words coming out of my mouth, I hear my, my ears kind of tingle because it's like I don't even recognize the man who's speaking. That's, that's an awesome place to be because the Lord says, I'll give you words to speak. I'll give you the words to speak. That's what I want. I want to, I want the words coming out of my mouth to be nothing but the word of God being spoken by these lips. <laughs> well, I hope that you have a blessed night tonight. I am going to retire a little early this evening so I hope that you have a blessed night and a blessed day tomorrow tomorrow's hump day already and we've only worked one day <laughs> praise God I'll talk to you tomorrow and I'll look forward to hearing about you getting into to your word please drop me a note and tell me that you are studying your Bible that you're dusting off that cover and wandering through the pages of a wondrous adventure that he is writing on your heart. Love you guys. Bye.